Hello, everyone. This is Leonard de Guzman here with Emily Robinson on the Life After D podcast. We're here. It's the new year, January 5th, 2021. Remember when you were in school and you had to like, you, it took you like the whole week to not put like the last year. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, yep. Yep. It's still happening. I know. It's still, I still do that. I, I mean, it, yeah. it, things 2020 to like March. <laughs> Yeah. Um, one thing I did the other year was um, when we were uh, in Hawaii, I booked uh, the, I booked, <laughs> I, I messed up the return flight and it was like for like, um, I forget, it was like in, I forget what year it was, but we were there for the like the whole month. I oh got my the gosh. time wrong. Yeah. So it was like supposed to be like, we were there for like two weeks, but then I got the numbers backwards and and what's funny when I called the rep, the airline rep, um, th she messed it up too. And then, but you know, long story short, um, don't do that. Double check when you turn stuff in because we're not in 2020 anymore. So were they able to fix it? Uh, my wife was able to talk them into, cause you get fined, like you get, uh, yeah. Yeah, so she was able to um, talk him down, and um, yeah, it was the weirdest thing because we were on the way to the airport. And I look at the itinerary. I'm like, ah, wrong day. Oh, that's funny. So, so good thing was we didn't get divorced. Well, that was good. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. So, uh, what's going on in the divorce world? I got we got backtracks here. No one wants yeah, to hear it. No. <laughs> All good. Just busy. Um, Ventura is doing Zoom court. I did my first Zoom court yesterday. It was pretty, pretty cool. Um, LA is doing a mixture of phone and appearance. So it's just a new world and we're trying to navigate it. <laughs> it's, you know, we're all trying together. The judges, the court staff, the lawyers, everybody. So like, let's get this going uh very sterile clean um divorce process just no one that maybe it's better not to even like be in the same room as each other you know? that is better yeah yeah it's, so it can't be that i mean you know glass full half empty kind of thing so all right um enough with my uh life <laughs> Uh, let's get into the news. So in this part of the show, we're going to go over the news, the divorce news, lots of times, um, depending on what's trending, what we see, um, a lot of celebrity divorces. That's very interesting to me, at least. Probably to Emily's They're always too. trending. Yeah. Um, so let's get to the news. All right. New York Times. This one looks like a very uh, big divorce. Um, so, so according to New York Times, um, it's mother versus son in Britain's priciest divorce war. Ooh. Tatiana Akimedova is trying to recoup part of a $615 million judgment owed by an ex-husband by suing her elder child who she says has been shielding his father's assets. Mm, wow. As we leave behind a year of plague and solitude and hope for an age of renewal and togetherness, readers may yearn for an uplifting story about family, love, and community. If you're one of those people, here's some advice, read something else, because there is <laughs> nothing but malice and exorbitant legal fees in the story of the 27-year-old uh, Tamur Akhmedov and the divorce of his Parents, the uh, Russian billionaire uh, Fark had, um, but I, what is it? Is, is this, this seems like a divorce between children, but whatever. It is a, a, a feel uh, y'all aren't for a feel awful era, offering the unhappy spectacle live streamed in December for the family division of the High Court of London of a mother testifying against her son, vice versa, she sues him for nearly $100 million in cash and assets. It's, it's just a part of the of Miss Akhmedova's uh, ongoing efforts to claim a 
portion of the $615 million divorce settlement, believed to be the largest in Britain's history, awarded to her after a trial in 2016. Her ex-husband has refused to hand over a single uh, ruble um, and has kept his money and himself far away from the United Kingdom and the reach of its courts. So uh, Ms. Akmedova and her lawyers tried a new approach. Tamur, the older of the couple's two sons, is a UK resident, which makes his holdings eminently feasible. And for a child who isn't 30 yet, he has plenty to seize. His father is showered Tamur with unimaginable amounts of money, as Tamur's own lawyers put it in a court filing. Um, so, okay, so these are the assets. Uh, this included a three bedroom apartment next to Hyde Park worth about $40 million wow. bought for him when he was in college. He's also the reg registered keeper of a $460,000 Rolls Royce SUV, Mercedes and more. Um, and so he goes, yeah, I told my father what to do. I was the mastermind, he said, sarcastically in an interview conducted over Zoom on December 4th before his testimony in the case um, no, it's not true. So, so well, people, how this work? People do do that. They'll transfer assets to a, a child or a relative or someone in order to stop their spouse from being able to get part of it. And it looks like it doesn't isn't part of the community estate, and they don't have to divide it. Um, I've seen that happen a lot with parents. People transfer assets to their parents to hide them. Um, or they transfer it to friends or other relatives, um, or it can be adult children. And what happens in California is if you're able to prove that that happened and um, find the asset, then the court can award you 100% of it. So not only do you get your half, but you may get the whole thing because the other person lied and breached fiduciary duty. Okay, um, that's... I'm 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 hesitant to go into the Zoe Kravitz divorce, but why not? Um, <laughs> so Zoe, oh, okay, hold on. Zoe Kravitz. Uh, well, let's let's go for it. Um, so page six dot com. Zoe Kravitz shares cryptic message amid Carl Glusman divorce. Uh, Zoe Kravitz appears ready for a fresh start on Saturday. Thirty year old, thirty two year old actress posted a cryptic message. Her Instagram story about um, ridding certain elements of her life the same day it was revealed she had revealed she had filed for divorce from husband Carl Klusman uh, the original post which was shared Saturday depicts the universe dumping uh, people places and things no longer serve my greatest honor uh, greatest and highest good uh, into the trash um, and then she put uh uh, Kravitz added her own comment to the post writing mood uh, reps for Kravitz confirmed Saturday she and Klusman 32 had split after less than two years of marriage people was uh, first to report the breakup Kravitz was first linked to Klusman in 2016 two years later she confirmed their engagement in an interview with Rolling Stone uh, let's see. Uh, so two years is 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 it more common now to have shorter marriage? Like in the last, I don't know, five years, or like is it? I, I feel like they're like people are getting like like especially in the, the last maybe two three years, like especially with COVID, it's like marriages are getting shorter, or is this just me? Well, I feel like in Hollywood, that's always kind of been a thing where marriages are, are shorter. I haven't really noticed shorter marriages in the general population, um, but definitely I think, you know, in the celebrities, they've frequently been pretty short, or at least the ones you hear about. Um, but I do think with us being a no-fault divorce state in California, um, people don't don't necessarily always feel the need to try and make it work because you can get a divorce for any reason. So 
it didn't used to always be that way. So um, it's been that way for a long time though. But certainly I think because of that, marriages may be getting shorter over time because there's no penalty to divorcing mm. and there's no, you don't have to have a reason. It can be any reason. Okay, this one is uh, from uh, Yahoo Money. And this says interest mm -hmm. in divorce loans jumps during coronavirus pandemic. The coronavirus pandemic hasn't been great for love. It derailed weddings and honeymoons. And some married couples are so eager to split that they're looking to take out loans to fund divorces. The number of inquiries of fund and divorce that <clears throat> loan re received was up 62% through November 2020 compared with all of 2019 according to the online loan uh, marketplace company um, after analyzing search divorce related queries it received from Google during those periods the company's data broken by state also indicated the largest divorce inquiries increases came from Tennessee Texas and Georgia. 2020 was a stressful year, more stressful than most, said Ethan Cobb, founder of Lonery. And sadly, we have seen the strain take its toll across the board, including the marital home. The divorce, the U.S. divorce rate is at a 20-year low, but Tab called today's polarizing political environment and diverging public health opinions amid Lockdown is a perfect storm for divorce involving couples with misaligned ideals. However, uh, the cost of divorce rivals that of a wedding, and some Americans are strapped for cash, according to a 2017 bank rate. The average divorce cost in the U.S. is $15,000, and even in pandemic, pre-pandemic times, more than a third of Americans were not equipped to handle a $400 emerging spend. Emerging emergency expense without leaning on credit or a personal loan from an individual or financial institution in certain circumstances. Financing divorce with a loan can be seen as an emergency for when you don't have an emergency fund to pay for things and you end up looking to have to look for money elsewhere. Huh. Wow. Well, my guess is those loans must be mostly for the attorney fees because the, you know, I don't, at least in California, that's what would really cost the most in a divorce, attorney fees, forensic fees. Um, I'm not sure what else they'd be taking the loan for, except maybe to buy their spouse out of a property or something. Um, but that doesn't surprise me because, you know, attorneys and, and forensics, they don't want to, and they can't afford to be a lender. Like they can't run up receivables. So you're either going to have to come up with a loan or, you know, owe the credit cards or somebody else, a third party, in order to pay those bills, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, my other AirPod, like, it, it just disappeared. I can't find oh, it no. anywhere. Um, but this one works, so we're, we're all good. I'll look for it later. Um, <laughs> all right. Next. The next thing we're going to go to is, let's see. Uh, Oh, this is interesting. Uh, so um, this looks like from Wisconsin, uh, Wisin, uh, W-I-S-N dot com. That's, I guess, short for Wisconsin. Um, wife of, of accused vaccine saboteur corroborates conspiracy theorist claims in divorce records in a filing the day before the police arrested Steve um, Brandenburg. His wife told a judge about conversation she said fueled fears the couple's two children were in danger um, the day before his arrest court records from Steve and Brandenburg's divorce show his wife cor corroborated the claims by law enforcement labeling him as an admitted conspiracy theorist lawyers for Gretchen uh, Brandenburg made the filing on December 30th the day she claimed she found out her husband was subject of the investigations into the intentional sabotage of 570 doses of COVID-19 vaccine. Wow. According to the filing, 
she told the judge her husband his rental units, which include bulk food and guns being stored. I was so concerned about my safety and the safety of the children that I left town for a period of time. Um, Brandenburg's wife also referenced a conversation with her husband after he picked up their children and dropped off a water purifier, a large bucket of powdered milk, and it's a two 30-day emergency food bucket, according to the filing. He told me that if I didn't understand by now that he is right and the world is crashing down, um, and the government is planning cyber attacks and plans to shut down the power grid. Um, try to see what this guy, I think he's a pharmacist, but uh, okay, so he faced a judge Monday after investigators claimed he admitted to intentionally leaving 57 vials, each with about 10 doses of Moderna vaccine outside a refrigerator to spoil. So, yeah, this is, I think she's leaving them. <laughs> That's crazy. Well, I mean, it would be really hard to stay with somebody like that, that, you know, intentionally committed a crime like that, especially with what we're all going through right now. Um, but you frequently see this when one spouse gets in trouble or arrested. <laughs> Excuse me. <Bless laughs> Allergies. <you>. Thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> Excuse me. Thank <laughs> you. The others, thank you. The other spouse doesn't typically stick around that long. Um, you know, especially if they believe the allegations. I mean, sometimes they will stand by their spouse, but if they believe the allegations and the allegations are serious enough, frequently they're not gonna stick around. And that's understandable. They don't wanna be tied up in that and they don't wanna be considered guilty. And I'm guessing they're probably getting legal advice that look, if you stay around, it makes you look like you maybe you know, we're supportive of this behavior, but if you leave, then it looks like you didn't know about it and you disagreed with that. Yeah, I think she should just <laughs> bail, especially now, like with the vaccine, that's kind of a sensitive thing. Um, so um, with that, uh, we're gonna go um, to the post, uh, online posts that people have um, in this part of the show. We go over um, things like, um, you know, people getting started in the divorce journey, um, you know, things that have to do with child custody, with splitting assets, uh, things. Um, in, in this case, I see the, um, social media and how that, that affects divorce. Uh, so let's get into it. So this one, uh, it looks like it's a infidelity one is a public divorce. Uh, my wife of 23 years divorced me on Facebook oh. uh, because she's drunk and not happy. She lashes out at me and brings the kids in it. So they can pick sides. It was a horrible argument tonight, just days before her dad died. She drinks a Coke and it's killing her. And she thinks she can keep the fact that she's drunk. Uh, I don't even care about it because of her dad. She blows up and says her heart is still with her abusive affair partner who her brother had arrested for domestic violence. She misses him. I replied, I really do wish you peace and happiness. Alcoholism really does destroy lives and families. I miss the old person. Um, good luck. Wow. I've seen a lot of divorces over alcoholism and drug use. It makes things very, very, very hard on the other partner or, um, and the kids, if there's kids, um, it's, it's really a, a hard thing. And it depends if the person is willing to get help or not, but sometimes even if they're willing to get help, it's really too late for, um, you know, for any, like, like the, I don't know if the love's gone, but the trust is gone and it's really too late for anything to fix the relationship. But I've seen times where people reconcile, you know, too, but it does, it can really destroy marriage. I've seen that a lot in my cases. Yeah. Since Facebook, um, already spies on my audio, like I get ads when, um, I mean, they might start doing divorces, like 
How well, are... yeah, like <laughs> that's something when I was a kid, you would have never seen people breaking up by Facebook or, you know, now they break up by Facebook text. Like, I mean, it's crazy. <laughs> oh, and they post all this stuff on Facebook that's private that it's like, did do you really want the whole world to know that? I guess you did. <laughs> I guess you did. <laughs> okay, uh, let's get to the next post. Um, divorce, just because I'm unhappy, this person looks like they're just getting started. Uh, me, um, male 41, her female 45, married nine years together for 15, no kids, but her parents live with us due to health concerns I previously posted. Uh, numerous complaints I had um, that was leading to my decision to divorce. I was the only one cleaning, cooking, uh, and excessive clutter really minuscule concerns. Well, after airing out my grievances, they are now resolved and everyone is helping out. So now I'm left with no valid complaint on why I hate it here. I think it is uh, my desire to have a more simple life with less responsibility, completely selfish thought and decision that I'm contemplating. I love my wife, but I hate the life we've created. I hate the responsibilities of owning a home too big for our needs. I hate our parents um, being in our space. I hate caring for someone with dementia, the repetitive the conversations. And I miss what it feels like. Um, I miss what I used to feel about my wife, which I've been faking for a few years now. I'm not sure if I've um, ever been truly happy with her. Uh, is, is it possible I'm having a midlife crisis? Uh, I feel like a jerk leaving someone just because I suddenly uh, want way less with my life and, um, and I'm happy. Uh, I can't bring any of this up without her falling apart. And the only person I can find in is, bi is biased on leaving uh, bias on me leaving her so here I am thank you for reading uh and throwing in your two cents appreciate it oh Any, that's hard yeah that's hard I think uh, I think a lot of people's desires in life change over time and I think that um the fact that the person is asking for advice and feeling some guilt about this you know um is a good sign meaning that you know he's hesitant to take these steps. So he's not 100% sure that it's right. It could also be a midlife crisis. I definitely think that person needs to talk to a therapist ASAP to really figure out what he wants before he makes some big life-changing decisions. But it is true that people change and want different things. And he needs to have a conversation with his wife about that. And it's interesting to see it from that side because usually the posts are, you know, my spouse cheated on me, my spouse left me. Now you're seeing the side of the lever and what goes through their head and they struggle with things too. And those things need to be addressed because that could help, you know, save some pain for the other person. So hopefully he gets therapy and really figures out what he wants. Okay, uh, that's all the time we have for today. Um, so I wanted to wish everyone a happy new year. Uh, and uh, get Emily's Emily's uh, New Year's resolution. W what do you got? What do you got for us? <laughs> my New Year's resolution. Yeah. Um, well, my personal New Year's resolution is going to sound silly, but it's to drink more water. I'm terrible at remembering to drink water, and when I do drink my like eight glasses a day, I feel so much better. So that is one of my biggest New Year's resolutions this year. <laughs> Okay. It also well, keeps me really healthy. Yeah, that's that's a good one. Um, mine is, um, I was gonna say not eat junk food, but it's like lunchtime now, and I kind of feel like Taco Bell. <laughs> so, um, okay. Why so you're making me want Taco Bell? <laughs> okay. So. Um, so it's the new year, right? January 5th. I know California passed some new laws, but are there any new um, policies that, uh, you know, as far as divorce goes, um, that we should be aware of? Um, nothing specific that, that significantly changes things, except that one big thing that makes me so happy, if you, um, you know, if a case isn't brand new, if you've already appeared in it and filed something, and you have a lawyer, 
things can be served by email. That is a new thing. And I know that sounds silly, but it's so nice that I can just serve things by email now. So great. Um, but nothing else um, pops out to mind. Uh, but usually we um, go over all the new laws in January in all my study groups and read any cases that really were significant for 2020. So I'm sure in a future post, I will have more to share. Yeah, so if you think of anything, you're gonna have to tune in. Uh, so thanks everyone. Uh, thanks for all the viewers listening. Viewers listening, um, people, whatever. Or viewers. watching. <laughs> yeah, okay. So um, yeah, so thanks for joining us on the Life After D podcast. We'll see you next week. All right. Bye.